Hello, this is the project titled Line Follower Turtle Board, which is the final project for the course ENPM 808X Software Development for Robotics in Fall 2017. I'm your presenter Sudarshan Raghunathan and I will walk you through this project. As you can see the table of contents, we will discuss the overview of the project, my motivation to do so, a little bit about myself, the algorithm used in the project, and a demonstration video to show how it works and the potential future work that can be made. To give you a quick overview, this project uses ROS to demonstrate a simple line following turtle board in a simulated gazebo world environment which was created by myself. The project uses Ubuntu 16.04, ROS can take an open CV3. The turtle board is used as the vehicle to demonstrate the concept which uses simple image processing techniques. And the camera on the robot is used to identify a, a yellow colored line and provide velocity commands to follow this line along the environment. My motivation behind doing this is that line following is an easy to design application for a robot and it requires very few comp components. It only requires a robot which has a camera or some detection, uh, some method to detect, like a sensor and a few and few tapes or whatever to just stick on the flow. It can be used, however, to create complex high level models using multiple robots and multiple paths and can be implemented in shop floors and industries and warehouses for material handl handling and part distribution between different machines. These robots can follow these parts in a periodic manner and that way we can automate the entire warehouse or the sh shop floor in a very cost effective manner. This is a simple step towards having lights out factories that operate without any human intervention whatsoever. I'll give, to give you a quick recap, uh, overview of myself. Uh, I'm a graduate student in, robot, in the robotics program at the University of Maryland College Park and my area of interest are medical robotics, industrial automation and computer vision. I'm currently employed as a research assistant at the medical robotics lab in UMD and I primarily work with a KUKA arm in developing surgical applications. I will quick, now quickly take you through the algorithm that is being used in this project. This project primarily uses two ROS nodes one for the detection of the line and one for the navigation of the robot. The detection node gets the images from the turtle board in a simulated environment and performs HSV based color thresholding to identify a yellow colored line. Once this line has been identified, the image is then masked and then the centroid of the, of the line is, ad, is found, which with respect to the position of the robot allows us to determine which direction the robot needs to move in. This, determ this direction can either be forward, left, right, or a search, which is basically just spinning about, which is just spinning about the angular Z on the spot till, the li till a line is detected for the, for the robot to follow. The direction commands are published using a, cu a custom message by the detection node, and the navigation node subscribe to this subscribes to this message to publish velocity commands to the turtle board. This way, the robot successfully follows the path throughout the environment. Once it reaches its, its goal, it begins the search, begins the search uh, direction command and rotates on the spot. And this way, it, it finds its, the path that it currently took and takes the path back to the starting position. This way, these m robots can be coded to follow a certain path repeatedly over time over a continuous period again and again. The, the entire algorithm can be explained simply using this activity diagram here which, de which describes both the nodes, the detection and the navigation node and the communication between them. It is, uh, to build and run, these are the simple steps that one needs to follow by typing into the Ubuntu terminal. And this will be explained better in the demonstration video that is coming. As you can see here, I am typing the commands that were mentioned in the previous slide where I create a catkin workspace and create a directory called source. Once I catkin make in this, in the original catkin workspace, I can then clone my repository and into the catkin workspace. I'm just going to go through this quickly here. And once I 
once I go clone my repository, I make the catkin workspace again. And this compiles the entire code and builds it. Once the code has been built, we follow, we source to the catkin workspace and use the ROS launch to run the launch file, which will launch the entire project. So soon as you click enter on the launch file, it will launch the gazebo environment with a window, which is what the camera image is obtained from the turtle book. Now, as you can see, it is a simple environment with some rooms and a yellow line, yellow line that starts off and goes out and leads all the way out of these rooms. The turtle board here turns a little earlier than the line itself due to the position of the camera on the turtle board, which is a little high up. And hence the, the robot only sees a little ahead of it and not the line right below it. This, due to this reason, a lot of masking had to be done to prevent the intervention of future turns from affecting the turtle board's current position. But however, even though a lot of masking was done, the turtle board still turns a little earlier due to the fact that it sees a little ahead of it and not right underneath it. The video is currently being played at 1.25 times the speed, but I am going to increase it to 1.5 times the speed because this presentation needs to be limited to 5 minutes. The entire video can be found in the, in the video description below. This is the output from the terminal which shows you the direction that the turtle board is moving in which is either straight, left or right or search. I'm going to go ahead a little bit to show you what happens at the end. Well, once the turtle board reaches the end, it begins rotating around to try to find a line. And the terminal output searching then as you can see here. And once the turtle board rotates back around, it finds the line and it follows the same path that it currently took. As I mentioned earlier, you can find the entire video in the description below, which you can view later, which I will not go through the whole video right now due to time constraints. But as you can see, the robot keeps following the path and reaches back to the start point right about here. Once it stops detecting a line, as again, it, it rotates around to find a new line and continues the path. The line was the other line was not detected in this due to the masking, and uh, and as you can see, that is the whole demonstration for this project. To speak a little about the future work, the future work in this project is focused on improving the algorithm, like as I had mentioned, by placing the camera at a lower location so that the line right below the turtle board can be viewed and not something a little ahead of it. This way, the masking doesn't have to be so severe and the turnings can be done a little earlier and predicted and turned a little smoother. The control type algorithm is also a bang bang type algorithm meaning that it either has commands for going left, right or straight. This can be improved by using a PID which will have a smoother velocity profile and control the error messages from the centroid a little better. This project can be further improved by adding multiple robots to navigate multiple paths. This can be done by using different colored lines and color code each robot and use different color space, color thresholding techniques to find these lines. This way the robots do not get confused between each other's lines and follow their paths successfully. They, we, can, we also need to add collision detection to these robots because they will be working in an environment with dynamic obstacles. And since these the obstacles are moving around, we just have to wait for them to pass if they ever come across the path of the turtle board. The path needs to be designed carefully enough that no static obstacles come in the way initially itself. And overall, we need to get autonomous control of all these robots under one single system so as to have a smooth, controlled, uh, fluid material handling in an industry or a warehouse. Thank you.